Hi, Lotus Master, guys. Fabulous Friday to one and all. Welcome to Singapore International Dynamic Speaker Chapter Meeting. My name is Ahmad Rasim, and I'm of the Toastmaster of the day for this meeting. <laughs> meeting theme is considered around commitment. Commitment. According to Vince Lombardi, an American football coach, most people fail not because of lack of desire, but because of lack of commitment. In other words, a commitment is pledge that obligate you to assume a position or carry out a specific course of action. Making commitment to doing or supporting something, whether in your personal life or professional life, is one of the most fundamental activities of success. Before we hear the speeches in the topic session and prepared speech section, I will invite our president, DTM Willilo, to convey his opening speech. Over to you, Mr. President, Willilo. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Before I start, I would like to share something. If you are new to Toastmaster, you, you will you will not know about this or if you are if you do not if you are already toastmaster for a number of years this is very familiar to you okay what comes to your mind when you hear the word commitment commitment is a tricky it's a tricky words if you google the definition you will get some very set responsibility, ob ob obligation, duty, tie, and liability. The words can read more shuckers to shut to close off that now that to inspire you to the next level in your books or entrepreneurs ventures. Today, I'm going to talk about the commitment we all made when we first joined Toastmaster. The promise, I didn't understand that. the promise is not just for the organization of Toastmaster International or our fellow club members, but it's a promise to ourselves. This speech is a refresher on the promises we make to ourselves when we join Toastmaster. Sound body one said, Toastmaster is like an ocean. You can come be a bucket. I feel an entire bucket or come with just a spoon and take a spoon food. Keeping the Toastmaster promise always keep, always help you to get a bucket full. But to add, okay, let me share, share my screen again. Okay, it's okay. No problem. Can you go forward? Go okay. so attend Toastmaster Club meeting regular. Toastmaster is a is a, a course for a course. We learn to conquer our fear and sharpen our skill by interacting with others. Attendees meet regularly and agree various roles help us to interact more with others. There's a Toastmaster once, some Toastmaster once said, I was able to conquer my fear of scuttling because I attended Toastmaster regularly and interact with others. I prepared my, to prepare, the second part is to prepare all speeches and leadership projects to the best ability, basing them on projects. Project in the pathway menu. 
to prepare for and fulfill MIDI assignments. Our performance in Toastmaster is directly proportional to the amount of preparation we do. Menus provide a structure for us to prepare for the various roles in Toastmaster. Preparation and performance always go hand in hand. Can you imagine how many times they will prepare before the could you imagine how many times a contester, a world champion of public speaking, who prepare before they deliver their best performance in any of the contest level? The best speaker should not be in topic. Table topics need for them. To provide fellow members with helpful construction feedback. For example, Michael, what an awful speech. How many times should I tell you to improve your vocal reality? By the time you finish your speech, the audience will all be you. Then I can say, Michael, you have a great message in your speech. All you need to do is to come up with a powerful conclusion. Also, I think your voice volume was a bit low when you say raw like a giant. See if you can raise your voice when you say raw like a lion. I enjoy mentoring you. Providing a constructive evaluation help the Toastmasters to understand their strengths and give them extra motivation to work on their weaknesses. Possibility to help chart maintain capacity very environment necessary for all members to learn and grow. To, to treat fellow club members and guests with respect and courtesy. Possibility in Toastmaster is there just in the evaluation, but on every aspect of Toastmastery. Right for the time someone enters this meeting room, they are greeted with cheers and angry ways. Leaders in Toastmaster try to keep capitalize on the stress of individuals towards achieving commerce growth. Plus, if, if possible, become possible. To bring guests to club meetings so that they can see the benefits of those master meeting membership. How many have of you joined or attended those master because a friend say so? Raise your hand. Wonderful. Let us not keep the changes called those master just for ourselves. Let us really guess at other new people to discuss so that we can learn from each other. To serve the club as an officer, we are called upon to do so. Clubs do not sponsor, run sponsor, sponsor Each meeting requires plenty of collaboration and plenty of tea as well. If meeting possible are the movie star, the club Officer are directors. They act behind the scenes for the members to have a wonderful early experience. When your club need your leadership, you can volunteer that to sustain the momentum of the club. To adhere to the guidelines and rules of all those master education and regulatory programs, to maintain honest and highly educated ethical standards, ready the conduct of all those master meetings. For those who might have watched the same assembly at Parliament, those master meetings are very different. There is high energy and individualism at the same time to maintain a high standard, and there is a lot of discipline that go to be maintained. We, do, we don't brag the judges in contest. Lee, do you brag judges by, by giving their kick, uh, ticket? Chocolate Roche. We maintain high level of security when we play various roles. Fellow Toastmaster and guests. Commitment in Toastmaster is one thing you can help the child. Volunteer your roles today by going to the program sheet so that your your vice president at education did not need to go, go and come to you and ask you every week. Help, help the club officer so that they can work on better things that can help the club reach 
and I will run. over back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Willilo. This is true. Commitment is fundamental to continue our club. We are leader or we are member. We have to commitment to be solution of the problem, to be on time when we start the meeting. Hello, Toastmaster. I just go. A COVID-19 pandemic was started from Wuhan, China, from a city, and now over one million people have been infected around the world. The pandemic has changed how we work, we learn, interact as social distancing guidelines have led to more virtual existence, both personally and professionally. I remember I joined the first time in the Toastmaster in March or April when the pandemic is start, was started. And I was excited that club is 100% online. I like it. According to Ron Mc Mike Lantry in her article published in LinkedIn in 2016, commitment are extremely powerful because they influence how you think, how you sound, and how you act, which then fits the perception engine of what other thing of you or your company or your organization. When you approaching, when you approach something in half hearted hope or best manner, the perception you are generating will be marginal at best. Ladies and gentlemen, making real commitment means that you try harder. You look for innovative solution when faced with obstacle. You don't consider quitting as an option, you are persistent and extremely resilient. In addition, meaningful commitment gives you a possible script for how to handle things when time gets out. My question is, what is script received for building commitment? Please, feel free to type your answer in the chat. And then in the meantime, let's hear from some our people, player who will be supporting the meeting tonight, what their secret receive are for building commitment. First is timer, Corey Melanie. Corey Melanie is passionate product designer who love to design usable and delightful product, whether it is an app or website that help people in their daily life. In free time, she love to find what the best coffee in town, traveling and exploring new places and food as well as taking photograph. The favorite quote is, never stop learning because Life never stop teaching. DTM Cody, could you please tell us about your role as timer? And in short, what is your secret receipt for building commitment? Over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Ahmad. As a timer, I will time table topic speakers, formal speeches, and the evaluations. I will also alert each speakers of the time they have left using the green. Let me show you the green. And then using the yellow and using the red card, which denotes specific time remaining. My secret recipe building commitment, actually we need to honor our own words. Like for example, today, I have give my word to Alicia, become a timer. Although normally on working days, I don't prefer to join any meeting because I have been tired uh, working the whole day. 
But since um, I made the commitment, I will make uh, all efforts to, 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 to deliver my words so that in a sense, we also honor our own promise and also try to be respect of our promise to others. Yeah, so that's uh, on my set. Uh, back to you, Toastmaster Ahmad. Thank you, Toastmaster Cory. Uh, today we have an exciting program for you tonight. We'll, we will kick off with the table topic master, followed by three prepared speech and evaluation of this speech. Uh, I invite topic master Lee Buckley. She is from Sydney also from Torres TMC in Sydney uh, University Club. And of course, she is a vice president public relation our club. For the, the first step, what is your secret receive for building commitment? After you after you answer the question, you can continue the top the topic session. Offer to you, Toastmaster Lee Buckley. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Great fellow Toastmasters and guests. My secret commitment is something that I hold to heart. A quote by Muhammad Gan uh, Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see in the world. If I wish to see certain things, if I want somebody to do something, then I should do it first. And that's my commitment to everyone. If I want to see, for example, if I want my students to study hard, then I should study hard. You know, if I want everyone to do table topics, then I will do table topics as well. So that's my commitment. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, this is considered by some one of the most exciting parts of a Toastmasters meeting. There are usually three parts I call PI. P for prepared speeches, I for impromptu speaking, and E for evaluation. This is the meat of the pie. This is the impromptu speaking segment. It, table topics is a long-standing Toastmasters tradition to help members improve their impromptu speaking skills. For the table topics tonight, let me share my virtual background. The timing is one to two minutes. The green light will be shown at one minute the yellow light at one and a half minutes and the red light at two minutes. And then you'll be kindly reminded that time is up at two minutes, 30 seconds. We have an exciting program today in terms of individual table topics as well as team table topics. To kickstart table topics tonight, we will have fun. We'll have the team event first. And then if you feel brave enough, you can volunteer for the individual parts after this. Tonight, we have two teams. Team one is led by Pooja. Team one consists of Pooja, Sebastian, let me have a look, Corey and Asmina. Team two are the quadruple A's led by Abu Bakr, followed by Alicia, Ahmad, and Angela. So welcome everyone. Are we ready for the team event? Each speaker will have one to two minutes to speak. Again, may I please remind the speakers to pin the timer. The team event will be a storytelling event where the first speaker will start with the story and the second speaker will continue followed by the third and the fourth speaker. And we will vote for the best team at the end of this segment. May I please invite team one leader, Pooja. What number would you like, please, from one to 10? Seven. Seven? Excellent. This is your topic for your team. If I'm committed, there is always a way, according to Tony Robbins. According to Tony Robbins, if I'm committed, there is always a way. Over to you, Pooja. Hello, Toastmasters. Hello, other members. Uh, so uh, I would like to 
Now, when I actually read this, if I am committed, there is always a way. I can, it actually transports me to a story about a man in India, a very poor man, but who actually dig into a hill to make a road. So the story goes like this, that there is a poor man and they stay in a village far from the city, which has no, which has no hospitals, no medical facilities. Now, when his wife is ill, he tries to take her to a nearby hospital, but faces many challenges. So during the, her treatment, when he actually travels a lot through many transports, he realizes that his village is actually at a disadvantage and he needs a road constructed. After dealing with uh, bureaucratic authorities, after failing to actually push his point forward, he decides, it, he decides to take hands in his own hands because he's committed to provide a solution. He says, okay, if no one is doing it, if no one is helping me out, but I have to find a way, I will do it. Given that there is a huge mountain, there is a huge hill, actually thinking that this man actually thought, okay, I have to find a way, I found that very commendable. So slowly over a period of, now, unfortunately, his wife also died, but his commitment never wavered. He started digging the hill. It took me almost, it took him almost 10 years, but he finally did it. So I, uh, after that, many of his villages, uh, villagers, his uh, co in other family members were happy. So I think if, if there is a commitment, there is always a way is a true statement. Over to you, is that? That's right. Thank you, Pooja. And then Sebastian will continue the story. Over to you, Sebastian. Good evening again, uh, uh, Toastmasters and fellow guests. In fact, uh, when he was uh, building that road uh, through that hill, at first it was very difficult for him because he was on his own. No one would uh, go and help him. So, But he kept on uh, digging and digging and digging. At some point, people were looking at him digging and they wanted to help him because at the end of the day, it benefited for the whole village. And today, when you look at uh, that uh, road, thanks to him and his commitment, everyone is using that road. And not only for, for people to get medical care, but even for trade. And that road ha has brought a, so much a, so much uh, wealth to that small village thanks to him and uh, I think that's it for me for now. Well done Sebastian, well done. thank you very much and it moves on to Corey. Yeah so after the route was built uh, all the people now can can use the route and they can remember those, uh, the person who has built it. And maybe this one will be like an inspiration story for those who always think that something is hard to achieve. Um, doing it alone is uh, always like lonely and can be never, can be, your goal can be never be achieved. But um, by looking at this story, we can, we can see that when you have a drive and you have a strong motivation, Along the way, people might uh, notice and maybe even help you to achieve your goal. You never know what surprise or what magical you might find along the way when you having um, quite strong motivation and also having um, much effort to achieve your goal. Sometimes angel might also um, take notice and they can send you some help. So by looking at this story, even for me, myself, I'm quite inspired by the story that Kuja has delivered. Yeah, it's, um, it's a quite good story that uh, I learned tonight. And it's also inspired me to keep looking at my goal and never, never think that something is too hard to achieve. So I really believe that when there is a, when there is a commitment, 
and when there is a drive, uh, there will there will be always a way. Although we we ourselves cannot um make it, but I believe uh, along the way people might help us. Yeah, there's uh on my side. Thank you, and back to. Thank uh, you, Corey. Yeah. Thank you, Corey. And to bring it home for Team One, please welcome Asmina. Thank you, uh, Toastmasters, and welcome guests. So my commitment story is that when I was starting the work in Canada, it was very difficult to move the stocks and the inventory from the warehouse to the customers. But slowly, with the commitment, I found the I found the customers and I found the team which helped me move the sales. And then finally, I was able to move it to online as well. So what I have uh, um, noticed that it is not difficult to do the things if you are committed so much and you have inspiration to talk with the people, like-minded people, you have TED Talks, YouTubes, which helps you to move forward in all those uh, stages. And if you are very strong and committed and ready to move in one direction, then it becomes easier and easier as day passes. And, and I was becoming more skilled in all, all the sales and other, um, other um, things. So the commitment is a thing which takes you forward and it helps you to develop, grow, and, and instill the good habits. Thank you. Wow, thank you, team one. Please put your hand together for team one. If I'm committed, there is always a way, according to Tony Robbins. Team two, are you ready? Please welcome team two leader, Abu Bakr. What number would you like, please? Uh, let me go for number three. Number three. Motivation is what gets you started. Commitment is what keeps you going. Over to you, team two. Thank you so much. Back in high school, uh, during my first one year, I had a girlfriend, her name was A. So Jordan, the, this was someone I had a crush on and things went well and we started dating and everything was good. But at the end of the first year, she broke up with me. I was devastated. I asked her why? She said, I wasn't always available. She said, I expect her to always be there for me, but I'm not always there for her. Fast forward to second year, sophomore year, I was able to get over her and I met someone else and I started dating someone else. Her name was B. So things were going well, things were going good, but then towards the end of the sophomore year, B broke up with me. I asked her why. She said, because you are not always available. She said, I wasn't always there for her as much as I expected her to be there for me. So I was thinking, I was talking to my friend, Alicia. Alicia was telling me, you know what, Abu Bakr, I think I know what your problem is. I asked her, what do you think my problem is? She said, you're, you're not really committed. You don't really have the necessary motivation to keep the relationship strong. So I asked her, okay, do, I, do you have any tips for me? And she told me, okay, what I need to do is for my next girlfriend, I should make sure I'm always there for her when she needs me. My motivation is that the relationship keeps going and my commitment is I'm always in the relationship. So third year, ladies and gentlemen, I met girlfriend C and uh, based on Alicia's advice, things went well. I was able to be committed. I was motivated to actually keep the relationship strong. And today we are married. I, so I thank my friend Alicia. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you Abu Bakr. Alicia, what do you say to that? <laughs> Over to you, Alicia. Well, I gave him so much motivation that that got me motivated as well to look for my perfect love out there. And I had, looking back at my love life, I had four major relationships, right? Okay, the first one, I forgot his name. So what commitment is there? I just got in because 
it was trendy to have a boyfriend. And this guy, I remember, he was quite good. He was like the big brother with, in those days, uh, the handphone was very big. Remember those giant handphones that you could use and knock people down, right? He, he had those handphones. And uh, I remember I had, I couldn't remember much of him because uh, all I remember he was quite entrepreneurial at his age. He was running a tuition agency, so it was quite enterprising. Uh, so I wasn't committed and I, I'm sure that was why we broke off. I even can't remember why we broke off. Then the second one was because uh, I was very committed, but my second guy, he wasn't committed. He had flings outside. So that resulted in my motivation that went skydiving. I was thinking, oh dear, could it be my voice too low? My hair too short? I'm not pretty enough? Oh, but I remain committed to myself. That's where I met number three. Number three was the ideal, was the best one. However, just like my good friend Abu Bakr, he had, no, he had commitment, but he was the disappearing boyfriend. Hardly there for me, right? So I stopped pining for him and decided to cut him loose. That's, that's where now I'm looking for the fourth one. Maybe number four will be the right one out there waiting for me. Over to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you, Alicia. Maybe your fourth one is the next speaker, Ahmed. Over to you, Ahmed. Motivation is what get you started. Commitment is what keep you going. I agree with the statement because I have experience, intention is not enough to realize our dream. 14 years ago, when I uh, was uh, as a worker in Jakarta, I had commitment that I had to small house in Jakarta. Why? Because it is important for my life and for my uh, wife as uh, protection from uh, sun and rain. Every week, I uh, went to property uh, exhibition uh, in part of Jakarta, in Jakarta, so I look for the small house, cheaper house, and affordable. And other day, I visited bank, how to buy a new house with not much money. According to uh, officer bank said that me, you had to spend your money step by step. And then during two years, I had to reduce my consumption, not important com consumption. I just buy a basic food to save money for down payment for the new house. And finally, in the end of after uh, two years, I could buy down payment the new house in Jakarta. It is great dream that I can realize it in the first step in my career. Back to you. Thank you, Ahmad. Who knows? You you could be. Number four for Alicia. And to bring it home for team two, please welcome Angela. Thank you. And what is my topic? Motivation is what gets you started. Commitment is what keeps you going. 
Thank you, Lee. I have been married a long time. And my husband and I have been unhappily married for many years. Now, this is a great success story and it's an example of commitment because whatever goes wrong, you can get divorced over breakfast, you can get divorced over lunch, you can get divorced over supper. But at the end of the day, you are still arguing and you are still there. This is obviously what keeps you together. And we have kept together to the astonishment of all our friends who look so lovey-dovey and who have separated. And they're now lovey-dovey with their second husband or their third husband or their fourth wife. And they can't understand why my husband and I are still arguing and still together. And the motivation and the commitment is what keeps us together because we know that whatever went wrong today, we still can have the last word tomorrow. So just go to bed, make up and get up tomorrow and argue again, because that's what marriage is all about. It's about commitment to the same old argument and the same old person, not looking for something better, a better argument, because all the arguments are still the same. Back to you, Topics Master. Wow. Thank you for your advice. Now I know why I'm still with my husband, because we kept arguing as well. Thank you, Angela. Thank you to both teams, Team 1 and Team 2. Before we move on to the individual segment, if you could please vote for your best team, either Team 1 or Team 2, for the Table Topics segment. We have a tie at the moment. Very good, 77% voted. Well, an 88%. And the final 10 seconds. Done. Thank you, everyone. That was fantastic team effort. What a commitment that you made to your team members to do this uh, segment of the Table Topics. And now for the individual segments, we will have probably about three speakers only. We have a first volunteer, Joan. What number would you like, please? Two. Two. What does commitment mean to you? What does commitment mean to you? Joan D'Souza. Commitment for me means just fighting through all the obstacles that we come across. Commitment means to me, just finding whatever means we have to overcome that particular obstacle. And for that, what do we need to do? We need to find our purpose in life. If you have a purpose and if you have a goal, you will commit and you will do whatever you want to commit yourself to it. For example, right now my purpose is to learn Mandarin. I've been learning Mandarin almost for a year now. And despite of my uh, move, despite of the COVID, despite of everything, I kept going. I kept going despite of even the distance that I am in. And despite there's nobody else around you who speaks uh, Mandarin besides me. And I don't have any more Mandarin friends surrounding me in physical um, as I had in Singapore. So, but I still connect with my friends online. 
I talk to them. And even I have some friends who volunteer to help me online to talk to me. And now I'm even thinking of taking online courses in mentoring. So my friends, it doesn't matter whether where you are, whether you are in Atlanta or whether you are in Antarctica, whether you are in planet Mars or planet moon, if you have a purpose to learn, then you will achieve all those obstacles, whether it's distance or whether it's COVID or whether it's anything in life. You need to have purpose for this because purpose will help you to move forward despite of any pain you encounter, despite of any, um, any uh, it will give you pleasure if you have purpose. My purpose is to connect with my friends in Singapore. My purpose is to connect with all my mentoring friends here. And my purpose is to keep learning and growing and build a good network of community around me, supportive as I enjoy everywhere else in, uh, on this planet Earth. So if you have a purpose that you want to connect, you want to make friends with your uh, people, or if you even, for example, you want to learn something new because you want to set an example for others, find your purpose, find your purpose. And that is the thing which will help you to stay committed in your goal. Back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Joan. Wow, what a commitment to learning Mandarin. All I know about Mandarin is that orange looking fruit that I can get from the supermarket. But I will try and learn with you as well. Thank you, Toastmaster Joan. The second speaker, Toastmaster Ibrahim. Would you like to try or are you at a place where you can't speak? Hello, first, hello, Toastmasters and guests. Hello, Toastmasters. Um, thank you for the opportunity. So, what number would you like? Please? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Um, let me go with number three. Number three. The first step is the hardest making a commitment to yourself yeah. for yourself by Mary Kay Ash. The first step is the hardest, making a commitment to yourself for yourself. Over to you, Toastmaster Ibrahim. Okay, the first step is the hardest. Okay, at this quote, it's more of like directly to myself. And the reason why I say so, I'm just looking at from how I start my career journey. Okay, I started my career journey at the age of 19 as a security guard. And I am hungry for change. I'm hungry for growth. But it is really hard. But I decide to challenge myself, needing no one to motivate me to do so. So with that, the commitment I put into it, it's what foiled my desire to keep moving. So I think with commitment, you can be able to achieve all it takes to be successful, no matter how hard the process might look like. And being as a security guard for nine years, it's a tough, challenging career step for me. But however, the day I embrace and develop commitment towards growth, I think it becomes a way for me to navigate my way out for success. And today, I'm in the HR team. It is a fantastic step, which I love. And of course, with this commitment, I urge everyone to be commit. Commit to yourself to success. Commit yourself towards growth. And with that, you can be whatever you want to be. Over to you. Wow, thank you, Toastmaster Ibrahim. You know, what a commitment to sharing with us your experience, as well as to reminding us that we should commit to ourselves as well. Thank you, Toastmaster Ibrahim. Our next speaker is Toast, uh, Hui Sung Tov. What number would you like, please? Any number, you mean? Any, Any number. number from 1 to 10. 
All right. Number four. Number four? Yep. If you look at my screen, please. Commitment is what transforms a promise into reality, according to Abraham Lincoln. According to Abraham Lincoln, commitment is what transforms a promise into reality. Over to you, Hui Sung. Well, this is really a big commitment for me right now to put for this table topic as what I can think of is immediately I can think of my love story. Since I was nine years old, I have this fantasy about my Prince Charming on a white horse coming to me from a land afar, from the white castle. So throughout my hunt for my Prince Charming, I realized something that's called the unconditional love whereby I've gotten from a somebody that wasn't fulfilled my selection at all. That is a somebody that is totally at the other side of the Prince Charming list. But this somebody has shown me throughout the years his commitment to the unconditional love that he has been given me. And with this, I put forth a realization onto what holds a commitment to be able to have two persons coming together is the unconditional love. And right now, I'm upholding that commitment together with this somebody for the 20, 21 years of marriage that we have gone through together. And now, if you ask me, what is a commitment in a marriage? I will surely tell you one thing. It is a promise to be together, getting all together, holding the hand together, and put ourselves walking happily, slowly and surely towards the sunset. And that is the reality for us, for my fantasy to be a happy life, a happy marriage life. Back to you. Wow, thank you, Toastmaster Huisung, for sharing your story with us. A, a reminder to all the gentlemen out there, it's Valentine's Day in a few days' time, so don't forget for, uh, to make your commitment to your loved one to either give us flowers, hint, hint, chocolates, or even that walk in the sunset. Thank you, Toastmaster Huisung. And now we have time for a couple more speakers. Who would like to go next? Abu Bakr, I can see you. Let's try another type of topic. What number would you like, please? Uh, okay, is number eight taken? Number eight is available. Okay, I'll take it. There are only two options regarding commitment. You're either in or you're out. There's no such thing as life in between. What do you say, Abu Bakr? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madam Table Topics Mistress. Uh, actually, this is a true statement. There's nothing like uh, you are in, you are halfway in between, or you are you are testing the waters. No, it doesn't work like that. Let me give you an instance in my own life. I got married uh, 2019 in March. At the end of March, it will be two years. So at the beginning, after we, got, we did the dating stage and then there was all the lovey-dovey, the butterflies and everything. But then after we got married, right? Then things started to change a bit. It wasn't that vision that we had in the beginning. We were fighting more. There was a bit of agitation going on. There was a bit of tension, you know, here and there. So we decided that, okay, this is what our elders have told us because we were told it's going to take a lot of patience and commitment to get this going. So we decided on our own that, you know what? 
we've decided to do this, right? Let's do it well. These things will happen. These fights will happen. These arguments will happen. Everything else in between will happen. But then again, let's remember the good times as well. Let's remember the perks, the, the, the benefits, sort of the, the sort of enjoyments that we get out of this marriage. Let us think of them as the things that outweigh the negative aspects, the arguments. And in a way, the arguments and the fights, right? They actually brought us closer. So we decided that, okay, let's take this seriously. Let's make, let's, we don't, we don't, we never talk about divorce. It has never been mentioned in this house. So we have already made a commitment that come what may, we will stick together. So I believe this is, in, when we started, we were in and out. There was a bit of, there wasn't a lot of energy there, but now that we decided that we're going to do this, we're actually getting the benefits. Even if we fight, we make up the next day, like uh, um, uh, Angela said. So it's not, there's something like in between as far as commitment is concerned. When you are into something, you do it well, you do, you give it your all. That's when you see the fruit. But if you are in and out, one leg in, one leg out, I don't think you're going to see the, the benefits. So yeah, I actually agree with that statement. So thank you so much. Thank you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster. And now to bring it home for tonight's Table Topics segment, Please welcome our Toastmaster of the day, Ahmad Nur Hasim. What number would you like, please? Uh, nine. Nine? Yes. There is but one degree of commitment, total, according to Anisha. There is but one degree of commitment, total. Over to you, Toastmaster Ahmad. Thank you, Toastmaster Lee, there is but one degree of commitment, total. We know like call total war, total war. And I think the commit, we can, we can get the best if we don't total. Uh, for example, uh, last year, I have commitment to get higher score in IELTS. Every day, I learn tip, many tips in IELTS test. In the morning, I spend one hour. In the evening, also I spend hour. Every day, I have commitment to spend for hour to master the IELTS score. And of course, sometimes I have a problem with commitment, but I remind what is my goal in the short term. My goal is to get higher score. So I write the goal in the wall in my room with uh, big word, Ahmad, you have to get seven score. When I get up, I read the goal and I boost my commitment, my time to get uh, the goal. I agree that in maybe in long term or short time, we have to total, we have to full commitment to find, to get our goal, physically or not physically. Back to you, Toastmaster Lee. Muted. You are muted. Thank you everyone for your commitment and your participation in tonight's Table Topics event. What a commitment everyone has made tonight. And it was so nice to listen to all the stories and to get all the hints and tips as well. We will now launch the poll. If you could please vote for the best Table Topics speaker.
the close race at the moment. Sixty-two percent. We just need a couple more votes in, please. And that concludes the I segment of the pie for tonight, the impromptu speaking segment. Over to you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Lee Buckley. Timer, can you give the information how many span time the for all speaker in the segment? Okay, I will post in the chat. Uh, I think all of them is eligible. Okay. Okay, thank you, Toastmaster Corey. We have commitment. We have break 10 minutes before we continue to the next segment. Prepared speed segment. So it's time to break 10 minutes. Thank you. Hello to master and guests. Welcome back to the second half of the meeting, the preparage speed segment. You will hear from three speakers tonight, sharing their thought of the pathway project that they are completing. Before we begin, let's look at the sum of your leadership to build commitment in chat. Ah, I will read from Abu Bakar Kimba. Commitment means discipline and self-control. When you make a commitment, you have decided to do something regardless of how you feel about it. Nothing changed regarding the activity you have decided to commit yourself to. Thank you, uh, Abu Bakar Kimba, for your definition about commitment. Our first speaker tonight is Alicia. And his evaluator is our president, Willie Low. Willy Low is an organization, organization catalyst of change, person who can make change happen and inspiring and influencing others. He had returned to Toastmaster in 2018 after leaving Toastmaster for 12 years to make change to Toastmaster community in Singapore. He went on to set up the first 100% online Toastmaster club in November 2019, Singapore International Dynamics Toastmaster. Mr. Willy, uh, please, can you uh, convey the objective of the project, Alicia project? The purpose of this project is for the member to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback and apply the feedback to a second speech. The purpose of this speech is for the member to present a speech and receive feedback for the evaluator. It's a five to seven minutes. Over back to you, Toastmaster of today. Thank you, Toastmaster Willie. Alicia Chia. The title is The Power of Four, Engaging Humor Level One, Mastering Fundamental Evaluation and Feedback. Alicia Chia is a happy, go lucky person who enjoys life. I am to live in the moment 
create memories and enjoy the journey more than the destination. Her hobbies are playing the saxophone, digital photography, sports, and being tourist within her own country, Singapore. Alice, you have time, five to seven minutes. Offer to you the power of four. Before I start, Zoom Master, or all of you, I will appreciate all of you unmute yourself. Because this is a humorous speech, so I like to hear people laughing. You can't, <laughs> you can't talk but laugh. Ah. I encourage laughter. It's not funny, don't laugh. Just laugh and it's funny. Thank you. A very good evening to club president, to guests and members. The number four is an extraordinary number. It is the only number where the number is the same as the value. Four, F-O-U-R, four. In Asian cultures like China, Japan, and Korea, they shy away from four because four sounds like death. Si, si, si is death in Mandarin. But then in other native cultures, the number four is the sacred number. Four colors, four seasons, the four races, the stages of life, the emotions, and aspects of human behavior. Now for me, the number four has been integrated in my life. Only thing I didn't notice it. Remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs starts with basic needs. Music ranks as the fourth basic, fourth great need for me. Just like Christian Nestor Bovi said, Music is the fourth great material one. First food, then clothes, then shelter, then music. If I can't have music, like sometimes when I have ulcers in my mouth and simply can't blow the saxophone, then I'll set forth on my favorite bike. Number four became very significant in my life four years ago when I got lucky and got my bachelor apartment on the fourth try. <laughs> Coincidentally, that block number started with four, four, five, six, A. So now there's many other things that I have also four. If anybody knows my number, handphone number, I not only have one four. I have two fours in my handphone number. <laughs> so I haven't died yet, right? I'm still around. <laughs> now, when it comes to love, I simply love the four-letter word. Now, don't get dirty, okay? Don't think dirty. <laughs> the four-letter word is none other than love. No. <laughs> And can anyone tell me in this audience, what is the average number of times people fall in love? Four? Four times. Sorry? Four times. Oh, so clever. This audience is super clever. <laughs> yes, research has shown that on average, we fall in love four times. And if your first or second or third love does not work out, you are still considered an average person. And I've forgotten that I had four loves in my life. It was just different kind of love. Now, as you know, love always starts with the God of Cupid. He draws an arrow and shoots the poisonous arrow to two lonely hearts out there. <laughs> but I disagree with the God Cupid, he should not shoot at two lonely hearts, but he should shoot at four lonely hearts. <laughs> Why four? The reason Thanks. being, okay, the reason being, I know you're very curious. The reason being that if you have four, that makes two couples, right? And 
if they find they're not compatible, even though they have the poisoned arrow, you can always sort partners just like what you do at Tinder. Sort <laughs> left and right sort. <laughs> that means you can get you can fall in love faster, right? If you only have two, how to? You get stuck. <laughs> they lose commitment, huh? <laughs> now, and this gets better for females. When the female fall in love, they get to do lots of action. Like what? They get to whip their hair back and forth. Back and mm. forth. <laughs> in the hope of attracting the other sex. For the guys, I know you don't have nice long flowing hair, but you could keep your hair like rock and roll. Like our toast <laughs> master of the day. He used to have rock and roll hair and then you can rock the hair back and forth as well. <laughs> four, the number four is superior. Why do I say that? If you remember Josh Orwell's book on Animal Farm, four legs is better than two legs. Why so? When you have four, you can run faster. You're more stable. We have two, you will tend to fall down. Like me, I always fall down. So humans should have had four legs instead. But then, being focused on four, one may suffer from it. How so? I thought four is very excellent, right? No, I'm talking about being immobilized. Someone once said to me, Alicia, don't be lonely. Come out. Don't stay at home. Otherwise, you face the four walls. <laughs> but I told that person, I realized I have three choices. The first choice, stay at home and really face the four walls. Go out and not face the four walls. Or break the fourth wall. So this is what I did. I chose the third option. Break the fourth wall. You must be asking me, what is the fourth wall? Now, the fourth wall, let me tell you a secret. It's this invisible line that divides the audience, you, from me. So if I break the fourth wall, you will feel the connection with me. Once I break the fourth wall with that glare at you guys, <laughs> I can then move forth and celebrate, celebrate with a big bang, just like my American Toastmasters on 4th of July. Oh. Now that I've shown you that you don't need to be fearful of four, you need to embrace four because it's Everywhere in your life, you could be a kindergarten student and you graduate and you wear the hat, you're, you're having a fall in your life. You just need to observe it and see that fall is everywhere. For me, the number four is integrated into my life. In this post-COVID-19, where many people have died due to this deadly virus, I hope I've inspired all of you to allow the number four to enter into your life and go forth and multiply. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Alicia. Please give a tender round of applause for Toastmaster Alicia with yeah, the four power of four, falling life, falling love for time. <laughs> no. Okay, thank you, uh, Alicia. Then the second speaker is Angela Lansbury. Her evaluator is Hiran Jatin Padia. Hiran, are you here? Yes, very well. Hiran is he is 
based in UK and is member of another UK TMC. Please convey the objective of the Angela project. Over to you, Hiren. Thank you very much. Uh, so the purpose of today's speech by Angela uh, is to present a well-organized, well-supported speech on any topic. The title of her speech is Teach What Your Teachers Taught You. Now, I'm sure that uh, our earlier speaker, Alicia, is smiling because there are four T's in this speech title as well. So we continue or we segue your, your good things of four or life in four today. So it is teach what your teachers taught you. Over to you, uh, Angela Lansbury. And the time is five to seven minutes. Thank you, Toastmaster Hiran. Angela has completed four part in part West, presenting mastery, engaging humor, dynamic leadership, and visionary communication. She is an author, an enthusiastic recycler, and blogger. She also teach English, business English, and conduct various workshop. Angela, your title is teach what your teacher taught you. You have five to seven minutes. I would like to remain to speaker to pin the timer, please. Angela, over to you. Do you see timer? Corey. <laughs> you are muted. Can you now hear me and see me? Then I'll begin. Friends, I call you friends because some of you are already friends and some of you will be my friends soon. I want you to teach what your teachers taught you. And you were taught things from the day you were born, you were taught to use language. There is a wonderful little girl in Russia who at the age of four could speak seven languages. Now, my family were not so ambitious. When I was a child, my mother wanted me to be bilingual and teach French and speak French. And I used to sing Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques. And to this day, I'm bilingual in French. My ambition is to go one step further and to get everybody like Bella, because many of you speak two, three or four languages and Singapore has four languages. Everyone in Toronto speaks two languages, French and English. And I don't see why if Bella could do it, the rest of us can't do it. And I'm expecting a grandchild next year. My husband and I are practicing. We're speaking English at breakfast, French at lunchtime and German at dinner time. You can do the same with any three languages you pick for your spouse, your flatmates, or your grandchildren, or anyone you choose to do so. Or you can do it just yourself silently with your phone looking up the words you don't know. So that was the first thing my mother taught me was to be interested in languages. Then my grandmother taught me to plait her hair. I used to plait her hair every morning. And to this day, I get up in the morning and I plait my hair and I think of my beloved grandmother. And my mother taught me how to tie a bow. A wonderful skill, which of course I still use. My father, when I went to school, taught me 
how to tie a tie. And later on, I tried to learn to tie a bow tie and something called a Windsor knot, which is a big tie. But now we have the internet. If you want to learn this, you can learn it online. Then my mother taught me to boil an egg. And I went to school and every morning I would boil an egg for my lovely father who drove me to school. If you're wondering why this egg is so large, it's an ostrich egg. My mother taught me the traditional way because she was very careful that I shouldn't injure myself. You put an egg into a pot of cold water, you heat the water up for about five minutes and then you get a boiled egg, which is not so funny and runny, but hard enough to eat. And that's what I used to do. Unfortunately, when I got married, the first thing my husband did was run in and say, that's not how you cook a boiled egg. That's not scientific. You have to start with hot water. Otherwise, how do you know how long it's been in the hot water? You boil the water first and then you cook it for three minutes in boiling water. That's how you cook an egg. Didn't anybody teach you? Well, my husband taught me. I thought my mother did it the more sensible way. I wouldn't say she was cautious. I would say she was ultra cautious. But I was living in my husband's house, not my mother's house. So I thought it would be politic to cook eggs the way he liked them. Many years later, my mother died. My father was left on his own. And the day after she died, he phoned up and said, I'm trying to cook myself breakfast. Can you tell me how I cook a boiled egg? I thought of what my mother had taught me, which is how to be very careful and start with cold water so you don't splash hot water on yourself. When the egg is boiled in the hot water, you then add cold water and the egg will peel off perfectly and you won't splash yourself with hot water. My father was old and frail and walked with a stick. I didn't want any accidents, so I told him to do it the way my mother taught me. Then he said to me, I can't find an egg cup. In my mother's house, we had egg cups. This is what you do with, in England, you put an egg in an egg cup. My egg cups were made in China and they said on the bottom, made in China. Assume everybody knew that eggs came in egg cups. Anyway, I rushed over to my mother, my father's house. I'm a hoarder. I always have extra egg cups. I've always got more egg cups. So I took him some egg cups. You can imagine my surprise when I got to Singapore and I found that egg cups made in China are not standard in Singapore. They put an egg in a bowl. So I was taught that things are done differently. Even a simple thing like boiling an egg, you have to learn how your mother does it, how your husband does it and how the Singaporeans do it. And most important, you teach your children how to do it, but even more important, your elderly parent who might be left on their own without another one, they've got to know how to cook their own egg. Otherwise they can't feed themselves when they're old and frail and on their own, whether it's COVID-19 or anything else. So the moral is, whatever you are taught, remember and teach it to everybody in your family, to your children, your grandchildren, your parents. There's so much you let know which is essential. That is all I have to tell you. It's very simple. Teach languages, teach people how to cook, teach people how to dress and flat their hair.
teach everybody everything you know. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Alicia. The very interesting story about your child period, adult, and of course, we get uh, new insight how to learn and how to teach. And the last speaker is Oh, Azmina Gulani. Just ask everyone to put uh, feedback in the chat box for me. Anything good and anything I should add and anything different. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Angela. Thank you. The last speaker is Azmina Gulani. Is evaluator. Her evaluator is John Souza. John Souza is an avid learner who constantly pushes her horizon. To her, the sky is limit. John, could you convey the objective of Azmina project, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, just give me a minute, okay? Thank you so much. I'll just pull her. Evaluation sheet, yeah. Okay, um, the purpose of Asmina's speech, <laughs> um, I have, uh, just give me a minute. Okay, the purpose of the, purpose of Asmina's speech is during the completion of this project, the member spent time evaluating his or her time management skills. So, the member has to deliver a well-organized speech about any topic. The member may choose to speak about a time management exercise he or she completed during the project. Um, and the speech may be humorous information or any type of the member's choosing. The speech should not be a report on the content of the managing time project. So to you, TMD, thank you. Thank you, you Toastmaster John. Azmina, she lives in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, working in textile garment with her husband. Azmina, uh, your title is Effectiveness of Time Management, Leadership Development Level 2, Learning Your Style, Managing Time. You have five to minute. Azmina Gulani. Effectiveness of time management. Offer to you, Azmina. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Ahmed, Mr. Toastmasters, and the guests. My topic is how to effectively manage the time. If we manage the time effectively, we can save a lot of time for other things such as entertainment, socializing, meditation, and which will save our money, our energy, and will keep ourselves motivated and concentration will stay at its highest. For example, I'm in the pandemic, if I'm working from home, then I spend my daytime till maybe two o'clock. I, I do my phone call, emails, account work. And then in the evening, I set time for some outdoor walk or some treadmill run. And then I go for meditation. And finally, we eat. And then I, we go for some, we watch some movies, some drama, some shows. So I try to incorporate everything into my time duration so I don't skip anything, I don't abandon anything. Because everything gives me some experience, some skills, some information, and it keeps me motivated. It keeps my focus level at its peak. So first of all, you, in order to manage the time, you have to create the audit. You should, first of all, you understand how much time each of the tasks will take. For example, the phone calls and emails will take an hour or two hours. Then you have to set time accordingly. You have to set limit to all the time. You cannot be doing single task the whole day. If you think you are weak and you are doing single task whole day, then you have to delegate the work. 
make to-do list and do not abandon anything. Incorporate everything into the to-do list. Plan ahead. Depending on the nature of the work, you have to plan either a day before, a night before. You have to give five, 10 minutes time to decide what you, how you want to start the day. Or the first thing in the morning, you decide what things you need to cover today. In the morning, your body is well rested. Your brain is, stays more focused. You have more energy to spend your mornings on your most important tasks, which, which is the most important ones which you have given the priority. For example, if I'm a sales and marketing person and if I try to do accounts, I'll do it, it will take my whole day. So instead of doing accounts myself, I will delegate the accounts to accountant, which will save my energy and my money and it will give me greater edge over the end. Eliminate the multitask. I cannot be cleaning and answering the phone calls together. Either I have to do cleaning or I have to answer the phone and keep those time things separate in order to focus and be clear and get most out of it. Change your schedule. If you're struggling with the times and things are not getting finished by the end of the day, you wake up early, two hours early and do some meditation and do some uh, yoga, which will help you concentrate more onto your work. Leave some buffer time in between the works so you can always finish the work and do your best. Get organized. You don't want to be looking for a document or single paper or single entry at, when it's mostly needed. So everything you should get within the clicks or everything should be ready at your table in your file. In the business, you get 80% of the sales through 20% of the customers. So when you plan your day, when you manage your time, first you write five most important work that will give you benefit. That is the most important work, which will make your whole day and which will make you towards close towards your goals. Have a calendar setting which notifies you. Online calendars notifies you and, and send you messages that this is the time for this thing. This is the time for that thing. Stop being perfect. Nothing will be ever good enough. If you try to be perfect, then you cannot reach to your destination. Try to say no. If you are running over the time or if you have been invited after night parties or uh, late time projects, then try to say no because you have already done your work. Instill the keystone habits. For example, my keystone habits are watching to YouTube channels, watching, uh, listening to TED Talks, uh, watching different, uh, different uh, channels, exercising, meditating, meeting people of like-minded. These habits keep you motivated and it keeps you going and brings you closer to your dreams. Don't waste time waiting. While you are waiting for an answer or to meet someone, try to listen to podcasts or read some book or listen to some TED Talks. Telecommunication saves a lot of time. Nowadays, if you try to reach somewhere, it will take half an hour to dress up. It will take further half an hour. So you save this time by just telecommunicating. Find inspiration to different methods, to TED Talks, to in-person meeting. Batch similar tasks together. For example, if I'm doing emailing and phone calls, I'll finish that. And then I will start my accounts or other work. So do batch similar tasks together. It gives your mind same focus and your mind cannot transition between the work that fast. Do less work. Instead of doing more, do less. Less is better because it helps you concentrate fully and put your whole attention into one, one spot. By doing so, you will finish your work quickly and you don't have to redo and you'll get satisfaction. So always do less is important. So 20% of your sales coming, your 80% of your work is done by only 20% of your customer. In the end, if, one, if you want to manage your time effectively, you have to plan ahead, make down, note, note down what you want to do throughout the day 
throughout the week or throughout the year, what's your year end goals? And then you keep on checking and tick mark marking that how much you have progressed and what other things are required to fulfill your dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Azmina. Your story is very interesting. Please put your hand together, Toastmaster Azmina. Time management is, of course, essential to realize commitment. It is relevant with our topic, time management, effective management to help us to reach our goal. Of course, we have to strong commitment. Uh, according to Toastmaster Corey Timer, all speaker qualified in time manner. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we continue the last segment, evaluation, evaluator segment, we break 10 minutes. We will be back Yeah, uh, 11, 10, 11, 11, 10, Singapore time. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to third segment of tonight meeting, the evaluation and report segment. The first evaluator is Hiren. Hiren will evaluate Postmaster Angela. Hiren based in UK. He is also member of another club in UK. Hiren, you have time to, to three minutes. Offer to you, Hiren. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Ahmad, the Toastmaster of the evening. And it's my pleasure to evaluate, as I call her, the queen of languages, which is Angela Lansbury. Uh, I begin with, uh, uh, with the title itself. In terms of choosing the right title, teach what your teachers have taught you. Again, we, we know Angela's uh, strength lies in language and it is very evident in the way she's drafted the title using alliterations, which is T, T and T again, which is teach what your teachers have taught you. Again, a great uh, brownie point there from the, as I would call her, the queen of languages. Now I would, Based my evaluation on the standard template of commend, recommend, commend. Uh, beginning with commend, what I like is the vocal variety that Angela brought in. And again, comes with a vast variety of speaking experience she had. But using and changing the vocal dialect. And again, to give everyone an example, the way she brought in how her husband would scold in terms of this is not the way the egg needs to be cooked. Now, this is, this is where the vocal variety played in, where she beautifully displayed an angry or frustrated husband in terms of a voice. So again, a great uh, uh, lesson for, for, for speakers out here in Toastmasters in terms of how you should be throwing your voice. Good use of props, you know, from a bow tie to plaiting her hair to probably bring in an egg everything was available in her screen size. As I would say, she was readily bringing everything and showing what she was speaking. Again, a great value add as a speaker that you could have. She very well used the concept of storytelling, which is personalizing the story from her childhood, from her grandparents, how, how her grandmom taught her, to her parents, to her as a grandmother now, or to be grandmother now, how she would convey it. So the whole life journey was, 
what's depicted in the next five to seven minutes. Now, some recommendations. Angela, it would be good if you can weave in what does it mean to all of us? So while the concept and the thought is good, how does this bring in, when you use varied examples from egg to plating to bow tie, how does that weave or what's the central idea that, that you're bouncing off? So again, these are some of the takeaways that the crowd is wanting, saying, okay, from egg to, to bow tie, what does it mean? What is the central theme? What I also liked that you did as you closed, which was again a beautiful closing in, what does it mean to you? And what is the central theme that the cloud or the crowd can take away from there? So again, great speech and great narration. I close with a simple uh, showpiece. If you see this as, as a beat, your, your story had a lot of beats. What was missing was the central theme or thread around it, which can always improve. And I'm sure that with the new Chinese year, new year will be even more glorious with your speeches. All the very best. Thank you, Toastmaster. Hear your wonderful evaluation. The second evaluator is Willy Low. Toastmaster Willy Low is an organization catalyst of change, person who can make change happen, inspiring and influence others. He had returned to Toastmaster in 2018 after leaving Toastmaster for 12 years to make change to the Toastmaster community in Singapore. He went on the setup of the first 100% online Toastmaster club in November 2019, Singapore, our club. Uh, Mr. Willy Law, offer to you to evaluate Alicia, Toastmaster Alicia. Offer to you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, and especially to Toastmaster Alicia. You have a good structure of, in your speech where you started your speech with the explanation of four. And in the, I mean the common words of four, how it relate to people culture. Your body or your text, you tell us the experience of this, how it relate to you, how the number four relate to you, how, how things around you how the various four items that relate to your life and how to break relate to two lovely hearts instead of four. May you explain how to be relate to four and why not four. You also explain how girls and guys attract to the other party. And then you measure about the four walls that your friends did measure. Your closing, you ended your speech of how explanation of four, the four relate to your life different humor. You have a good sense of humor at various parts of your speech. My recommendation is, my recommendation number one is, you measure the basic needs which you need to explain briefly to the audience because they do not know what is the basic need of martial law. And then you could explain to them psychology needs, safety needs, love and enjoy esteem and self actually and you could pull out a chart of the martial, the martial law. Or you can avoid this statement entirely because nobody knows what is that although you did, you did explain to us food, clothes, clothing, shelter, music, and love. You have too many topics measured in your speech. Try to come down to just three or four topics so that we can follow because it's really hard for me to follow where you can have more humor and vocal variety on your speech. It's, you can use the explanation of four 
how the experience of things that relate to you in life usually the number four and explain why you mentioned about the four and end the speech with a punchline. I hope you allow the number four to enter your life and go for multiple. In summary, you did a wonderful speech which the audience has interacted in your human speech. Over back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Willy Low. We are writing the humorous speech from Toastmaster Alicia in the future. And the last evaluator is John Doja. She will evaluate Toastmaster Azmina. Toastmaster John is an avid learner who constantly pushes her horizons. To her, the sky is the limit. Toastmaster John, offer to you to evaluate Toastmaster Asmina. You have three, eh, two, two, three minutes. Half, two, 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 three yeah, minutes. Can you hear me and see me? Yep. Okay. First of all, I would really like to give a big round of applause to Asmina. Can we give her a big round of applause to Asmina for teaching us so many educational tips on how to manage our time? Asmina, you did an awesome job of educating us and enriching us with, by giving us so many tips on how to manage our time so well. I'm really indebted to you because during this COVID time, we really need all these tips. You not only shared it, but you also showed us how you do it in your everyday life. You, you do your up until 1.30, you do whatever work you have to do with your work, and then you go for outdoors work, then you do your meditation, then you get, you know, you get uh, your family time in the evening. And not only that, but you shared with us some great tips. I mean, something new that you thought was how to uh, prioritize, how to kind of uh, have similar tasks do together, how to do something which is more beneficial to you earlier, that will keep us more energized, and how it's important to do less rather than do more, and do more efficiently if you will be more efficient if you do less. So all in all, Esmina, you were like, you taught us great tips and you, you had also showed us how you do it in your personal life. But I would have just two recommendations for you. One is, it was really, it, I would have really enjoyed your uh, tips if you would have actually added some personal narratives of how you have actually used all these tips in your personal life. For example, did you, uh, do those uh, excellent tips of doing less. And if you have ever had a uh, time management conflicts, it would have helped us to uh, know that we can use these tips in our everyday life and how relatable it is to apply all these tips to an everyday life, how you did less, or in fact, another way I would say how you did more and it had some time conflict. And as a result of which you had, you did less, especially, you know, you have some great experience in work. So how it affected your sales or, you know, how it affected your personal life, how you were multitasking, you couldn't focus. So some personal narratives, some stories would have been really energizing. And second tip is uh, do manage your visual background because your face was covering most of the time. So that was a little distracting. All in all, Asmina, you really excelled in enriching, educating us, but uh, and giving us great tips and new tips, but keep in mind to share personal stories and how you manage your conflict time and keep your visual background great. And I would like to end with a very nice quote. It is not enough to be busy, but the question is what we are busy about, as Henry Thoreau said, and it really applies to you. Back to you, TMD. Thank you so much, Asmina. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster John, for evaluating Asmina speech. Uh, Toastmaster Timer Cory. Uh, if a lot are qualified, a 
Okay. Uh, now, following segment. Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to know the winner? I will announce the winner in three segments. The best speaker is Toastmaster Angela Lasburi. The best evaluator is Toastmaster John Toja. And the best topic master in club in group is Tim One. Abu Bakar and friends, and in the personal segment is Abu Bakar Kimba. Kong Rotalatan for all winner. Thank you everyone for fabulous Friday night of Toastmaster. I hope you enjoy the night as much as I had. Remember. When you only commit to the people and things that are truly important to you, your career, your company, your organization, the result are that your relationship will improve. You will be more successful in achieving your goals and you will have more time to enjoy your journey. And now, I would like to ask you to improve your commitment in personal life, in professional life, in profit or non-profit activity. I would like to leave you with this thought before I hand over to the club president for his closing address. Commitment, commitment, and commitment. Over to you, Mr. President, to give closing speech. Over to you. Okay, before I close, I think the Toastmaster of the day did miss up some winner. The best table topic go to Toastmaster Abu Bakar. And the best prepared speaker go to Edgel Lesbury. Before I end the meeting, I know. Let me put out one document and let us recite it, although we are not. Uh, but this is this is a, a promise that we all have. Let me open it. As a Toastmaster, we need to make a promise to the club, to the organization, that is Toastmaster International. And let me share out. Let me share out the slide. 
Can everyone recite after me? As member of Toastmaster International and my club, I promise. Can you unmute yourself? Please unmute yourself or I will unmute you. Can you all unmute yourself before I start? Amat, can you unmute yourself? Okay. I want to unmute. Okay, I all the same. Amal, can you unmute yourself? Okay. Repeat after me. As member of Toastmaster International and my club, I promise. As a member of the As a member of the my club, I promise to attend club meetings regularly. To attend club meetings regularly. To prepare all my projects to the best of my ability and base them on the Toastmaster educational program. To prepare all of my projects to the best of my ability, basing them on the Toastmasters educational program. To fulfill for and fulfill, to prepare and for and fulfill meeting assignments. To prepare for and fulfill meeting assignments. To provide fellow members with helpful construction evaluation. To, to provide fellow Toastmasters with helpful evaluations. evaluations. To help the club maintain the positive, fairy environment necessary for all members to learn and grow. To, to help the club maintain the positive environment necessary for all members to learn and grow. To serve my club as an officer when called upon to do so. To serve my club as an officer. To treat my fellow club members and our guests with respect and courtesy. To treat my fellow masters and club members with respect and courtesy. To bring guests to the committees so they can see the benefit those master membership offers. To bring guests to club meetings so they can see the benefits of the membership membership to the master's membership to adhere to the guidelines the guidelines and rules for all two masters of education and recognition Integrity, respect, service, nature. To add, be those master core values or equality, respect, service, and excellent ready to conduct of all those master activity. Act with to act to within the those master of value of integrity, respect, service, excellence during the conduct of all those master's activities. Thank you. Well, Commitment doesn't end with after this meeting. Commitments continue till the day you decide to leave Toastmaster. Actually, this is to help. The reason why, why this batch, a Toastmaster promise was quoted in this meeting is because most of us have for Gauga, what we supposed to do as a Toastmaster when we first job the organization. We only know how to do speeches, but we do we, we forget that we have to do various things. Because by doing various things, we help the organi organization, the club, 
and most important is you. So commitment does not end today. Commitment will end the day you depart this earth. So before we end the uh, I will pass the control to the Toastmaster of the day to ask the guests for any feedback. Toastmaster of the day. Oh, no, important, most important is members of this club, please sign up for roles for the rest of the three months and next five months, four months, so that your BPE do not need to ask you every week. <laughs> let, let the BPE have some personal time. <laughs> Thank you, Club President, so that BPE can also participate in speeches as well. If you, if you like and enjoy humorous speeches from me, please help out. <laughs> uh, Abu Bakar, you got any feedback about the meeting? Oh, yeah, Mr. President, I actually enjoyed the meeting. I joined the first time, uh, the very first meeting of the year. I joined and I had so much fun. I enjoyed myself. And now I'm back again and I've had even more fun. So uh, thank you so much. I, I keep the standard up. I visited a lot of international clubs uh, during the day since the pandemic started. And I have to say, really, uh, your club ranks up there. So keep the good work and then definitely I'll join again and I'll see if I can bring my fellow Toastmasters to come enjoy themselves as much as I did as well. So thank you so much. How about Ibrahim? Ibrahim, Abdullah. Yeah, so meeting is a mistake. And I actually love the frequency and the energy everyone produces in this meeting. It was productive and I loved it. And of course, uh, we keep showing up, not just showing up, but I promise next time I'll be a couple room. Okay, Toastmaster, uh, our guest, Pulga, which do you have I, any feedback about the meeting? I really loved the energy and uh, the diversity of people, of topics, the kind of uh, this a speech which was done, I really loved it. I think there is so much to learn. There's so much of variety in terms of formation. So I think very nice. I really liked it. Okay. Toastmaster Ami, our guest, Sylvester. Hey, hi there. Yes, uh, for me, I really enjoyed myself today. It was very fun. And most importantly, I felt really welcome today. And uh, I like it and I, I look forward for another, another session with you guys. Okay, thank you. We'll see you in this time, right? Sorry, I have a question. Yes. You meet on Wednesdays and Fridays? No, no, we only meet on Friday. Friday, but because tomorrow is Chinese New Year. Tomorrow is Chinese, Friday is Chinese New Year. Because most of our members are Chinese. So we have to change the meeting. We have to bring a meeting brought forward to today. Our meeting is every Friday. Thank you. So, Uja, you got any question to ask us before we, we go? I just want to know, uh, uh... Lee told us that there are different uh, ways to go about it. So which is the best suggested one? I don't know. Should I attend more as a guest and see uh, how is it done? Or should I opt for one? What do you guys suggest? Okay. Everyone has their own purpose. You can attend as many times until you are comfortable with the club that you decided to. You want to join us also, okay, but we are very dynamic. So, means we do things faster than other people. And some people may not like the speed we, have, we are. So, if you 
are the dynamic person, our club is good for you. If not, there's many, there's a few hundred thousand clubs out there. But it's still one thing, it's your, it's the club culture, whether you like the club culture, the time, and if you prefer a in-person in meeting, cease, but because in-person meeting will be suspended until, until the COVID situation is over. For now, we are, everyone is online. Anything to add, Lee? Yes, matter. that's right. Because when you join us uh, in terms of our meeting, Puja, we are 100% online. So we don't meet physically at all. And this helps you to improve your online speaking skills. Uh, what I usually say is it allows you to practice the true essence of public speaking, but in an online environment. So it help you to frame your video, the way you speak, the way you uh, have your expressions as well. So Lee, I like the online meetings. It, oh, what uh, I am a little stuck should, in a sense, uh, should I just... Uh, attend to the meetings more online as a guest or should I actually go ahead and the way you had said there was a pathway for a speaking course so yes. I don't know whether that makes sense or should I just first improve my basics and then go ahead even when you join Toastmasters it starts with the basic as well. Uh, for example, with our club, we do assign you mentors to help you to develop your speaking skills. So it depends on what you want to do. You want to focus on your speaking skills or your leadership skills or both. It's fine. Uh, what I would suggest is that if you do join as a Toastmaster, you can get certificates, for example, when you complete each project, each, uh, let's say, for example, each level you get a certificate. And I always say to people, it's good to have Toastmasters on your CV as well. Okay. So Thank it's you. good to join as a member. I'm happy okay. to speak to you more about that. Okay, maybe I will end the meeting and then you can ask more after I end it. Okay, the next meeting is on the 91 9th February. So we see you there. Thank you.